everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Saray, and in this video, we are going to be setting up a budget for the month of December. Before we get started, I wanted to give you just a little bit of a background in terms of my budgeting. So sporadically, I've been posting videos about budgeting, but honestly, I haven't been as serious about my budget as I used to be. And as a result, my finances are definitely showing. So I thought this would be a great time to get back onto the swing of things as it relates to budgeting and give my budget a full budget refresh, so to speak. And typically, because I have many perfectionist tendencies one of those is sort of waiting until everything is perfect until I have everything laid out but I'm working really hard on those tendencies tendencies and being able to overcome them by just working with what I have at this moment and continue to improve as I go along rather than waiting until everything is perfect so that's where we are right now and that's why we're sort of budgeting at the end of the month we're doing a full budget rehaul in probably the worst month that we could probably do that which is the month of December with all the holidays and all the gifts and all of that stuff. So that can definitely be a huge challenge. But my philosophy is all about if you can do it during the hardest times or the most challenging times, then you can do it anytime at all. So that's why we're here in the month of December doing a full budget revamp. I have spent the past couple of weeks on and off really uh, taking a look at my budget, drafting a few different things and really coming up with a way that it's going to be uh, more sustainable and also trying something new. And when I say new, I mean like newish. Uh, it's something that I've tried before, but I didn't stick with it long term. And I also thought that my system back then when I was trying this system was not maybe the most simplified, but as time goes on and we continue to try different things, we figure out ways that we can hone in uh, the details and make it a little bit more sustainable for us to be able to stay with it on the long run. And I think I, I haven't fully figured it out, but I've definitely figured out a few different areas that I can improve and I will mention them in this video. Some of the resources that I'm using in this video will be things that are going to be coming to my Etsy shop as well in case that you're interested in something like that. Uh, but I didn't want to wait until I had it all set up and like perfectly done as I mentioned. I wanted to get going and you know test some things out as well before I put them out there because I want them to work uh, for me and because if they work for me then more likely though they could work for you as well I don't want to put something out there that I haven't tested out myself so that's where we are right now I will also do a budget setup for the new year I'm going to take some time to set up my entire book for 2023 Again, we are in 2022, so I'm just focusing on the month of December, but more to come on that in the new year. So today is December 2nd, payday, so that's when I'm setting up my budget for the month. I'm going to be using these uh, labels in order to cover some of these, some of these categories that I don't use that are not relevant to me so I'm excited to start a new budget because the one I'm going to start to be starting in January does not have these categories so um, that's definitely going to help I might still use the label so I don't have to rewrite everything every month but it will be nice to not have anything in the category sections So all of my category labels are in now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just white out the categories that are not relevant um, to me or that I don't necessarily track in my planner. I love how thin this white out is, but I actually hate it as well because it's so thin. It just like rips. So I usually use the, it's the same brand, the Bic Minis, but those are the ones that I like better. For some reason they just feel they just feel different All right. like with my planning I love to decorate my budget as well I've been doing these budget kits for a while now this is one of the new budget kits this are all um, monochromatic uh, budget kits and they come in the different months in the EC gem tone colorway so that's what I'm going to be using to set up the month of December. Um, there are also budget kits that coordinate with other collections within the shop, like for example, 
Um, there is a collection titled Pink Nutcracker, which is this one right here. And there's a budget kit that corresponds with these colors. I just picked out the deco sheet from that collection just to add some decoration here but I just went with the um, with the monochromatic. The other things why I like this kit is that they're not necessarily, even though like technically this would be the color for December, they're not necessarily tied up to December per se, so you can use them at any month. So I'm setting up this section up here. This is for goals, and I like to add these little rating stars to rate how I did at the end of the month. It used to be three stars, but now there are five stars. I think it makes maybe a little bit more sense if more people are familiar with a five five star rating, rating scale or process as opposed to a, um, a three star. The other thing is that these uh, letterings are, or these scripts are they're meant to say goal one, goal two, goal three, but they're separated enough where you don't necessarily need to use the numbers. You can use a number for, for something else if you'd rather do that. I personally don't like, don't put the numbers in here. I just put goal, goal, goal. Um, but then you can use the numbers for anything else that you like. Based on how I worked my budget pre-work, so I pre-planned my budget already. So all the stuff that I'm putting down here, I've already thought of. I have it written out on a separate piece of paper and I just reference it. Um, just to make it a little bit easier and a little bit more efficient when it comes to filming. Um, but that's, you know, and, and I think budgeting sometimes it's something that I really need to pay attention to from a uh, concentration standpoint, as opposed to being able to do it on the fly on a film. I, I don't know if I would be able to capture everything. So that's why I sort of pre-plan it and then just list it out. Based on that pre-plan, I can tell you that I think obviously my budget is going to be different every single month and as well as it should be because we all have different priorities every month. So that's one thing that um, I kind of took away from that. I think I had been very rigid in trying to make it the same every single month, but it's just not, it's not, is not possible for me personally right now. So let's go page by page setting up each of the sections because I'm not sure exactly, even though I have pre-planned it, I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna break it down. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is just write out what my goals are for the month of December. And the first one is establish my updated uh, budgeting. cash system. So there will be some cash involved for sure. Um, the second goal this week is to do weekly budget check-ins. Not this week, this month. Do weekly budget check-ins. Because honestly, I think that's one of my, the biggest issues I had, or I didn't realize that it was a, not necessarily a problem, but it didn't keep me as close to the budget as possible. And that is because a month, while it goes by super fast, it can be a pretty long time when it comes to the budgeting. So I think doing weekly check-ins are definitely going to be helpful. Uh, and then the last goal is to simplify bank accounts. So I'm bringing them basically down to just two bank accounts. I don't think for me having multiple bank accounts really works very well. It would be just it would be just too much. So I'm simplifying those bank accounts. And actually, they're pretty much all simplified. I'm just waiting for one to be confirmed as closed, and then I can probably check that goal off. For this month. I have some mini month scripts uh, in the shop for for anything really. Um, they're, they're meant to be for any sort of use but um, I think they come in really handy for the budget kits for like this section for example and there are some large ones as well like these these large but, um, scripts which you can use you know somewhere on this page if you like 
So, but I really like this one. So before we fill out the rest of this page, I'm going to fill out this section over here. And in the past, I haven't really shared any specific numbers. And technically, I'm not going to share too, too many specific numbers this time either. But I did figure out a number that I'm going to stick to every month. So that number is going to be the same. So from an income standpoint, uh, that's the same number that I'm going to use, even though obviously our income does vary uh, month to month. But this this is just a number that I feel um, comfortable sharing in terms of being able to outline a budget. I think it's kind of tough to see the full picture without, you know, seeing the full the full budget. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing. Obviously, that does not take into in, into consideration all of all of our finances. Our finances are very complex, um, but I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible from my own personal finance uh, standpoint. So that's what we're working with here. Before we go into the totals, I just want to call out a few a few different things. The first thing is that some of the numbers are exact because I have the exact figures, but then there are other numbers that are um, estimates. So like for example, our electric and home gas, sometimes they fall in that category. Sometimes like our home gas recently has been only like $44, but then our electric has been a slightly over $100. So I'll, those will kind of just average out. You'll notice that I have two figures here for groceries and dining out, for example, or hair and nails. Basically what that means is how much I am budgeting for each pay period. So for example, for groceries, I have taken out $180 for our cash envelope for this, you know, this next, um, this next pay period. And then for the second pay period, I, I want to focus on taking out 120. I don't take out the whole thing for the whole month. So for the whole month, this month, our grocery budget is $300. And the reason why it's low is because we're going to be gone for about 10 days on vacation. So I'm not anticipating we're going to be spending a ton of money on groceries. Uh, one thing that I want to fix up here too is because on my pre-plan, I actually had sinking funds one and then sinking, sinking funds two. And essentially is each the total amount that I was setting aside for sinking funds for each pay period. But since I only had one label, I didn't want to, you know, have it different. So what I'm going to do is just kind of break it down the same way. So for this pay period, it's 510. And for the next pay period, it will be 500. The reason for that is because the extra $10 is for our prime membership, which is 120 a year. So that makes it $10 each month. And I'm not going to take out $5 each pay period. I decided to just take out one, one extra $10 for one pay period. So that covers that full sinking funds for our prime membership for the month. The other thing that I'm going to point out is that there are certain categories that are blank and those are on purpose, like for any extra income, I'm not going to include there or anything else that has to do with our finances. I won't include there. Our general savings, I won't include um, there as well. And then there are certain um, categories here which fall under sinking funds. So for example, entertainment is $2,400 and that's just a very large and generous estimate that I calculated for our vacation. Um, but that's not going to come out of the total here. Uh, because obviously, if you add all this up, it would add up to a lot more than the total um, as well. So we'll just have to figure out our finances in order to make that happen. But those figures are not included within the budget technically. So what I'm going to do is I want to highlight um, what are the categories that are cash envelopes. So groceries would be one, dining out would be another one, um, hair and nails, this would be another one, and then miscellaneous would be another one. So I really only have four categories in where I'm planning on doing the cash, the cash envelope system. 
So I'm just doing a little dollar sign so that I know that those are the cash categories. The other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight this entertainment dollar amount. And there is also this, um, the gifts a dollar amount as well. Um, Prime will also be highlighted. So technically, actually, no, it's not going to be highlighted as a sinking fund because what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pay it this year out of our regular budget instead of pulling it out because I already had sinking funds that are established. So I have a, a savings account with sinking funds, but I'm essentially what I'm doing here is I'm starting it all over again, all of my sinking funds. But I am highlighting it because this is an irregular bill. Um, typically, we don't pay, obviously, prime every single month because the extra $10 is already included in the sinking funds category. The other thing is that for student loans, they're currently at zero because they are in deferment. Um, so once that gets all figured out, I'm actually gonna be using this time to sort of reset myself. I Technically what I've been doing is I've been taking whatever my payment is and just sort of setting it aside. Um, I could definitely pay it off, but you know, there's a lot going on uh, in the student loan space. So I'm just going to leave it as is for now and then cross that bridge when I get to it. So for now, uh, these are the different categories that I am focusing on. All right, before we do the totals, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down some of these categories. So some of these categories here are pretty broad and if I'm not careful, I can forget why I set aside a specific amount for the specific category. So for example, um, obviously this one is not a great example, the entertainment one, which I consider it, I don't have a travel category here, so entertainment will be considered travel for the purposes of this budget. Uh, but there's a lot of different components that go under this amount. For example, it will be our gas, our car rental, our food that we have budgeted, any other miscellaneous expenses while we're gone, and our hotel stay as well. So all of those things I want to really break down on this side of the budget so that I know exactly why this amount is what it is. Um, the same thing for the other category would be uh, another category that I, I find that falls under that for this month would be co-pays. So if I have multiple uh, doctor's appointments scheduled, I want to know how much is the co-page for each. So it could be my dentist, it could be my uh, eye doctor um, that I have an appointment for, or it could be any other medical thing. So I want to kind of break those down. And then the other one that I feel falls under the same one is, for example, um, hair and nails, um, or even planning to, and I actually noticed something. I might have to make an adjustment here, but um, for hair and nails, that would be, $120 for my nails if I decide to go to the salon and then this $40 is for my hair color So I have essentially a couple of expenses and I want to break it down into those specific categories So that's what I'm going to use this space for All right, so this is like a general gift list for this month uh, with birthdays and Christmas and all that stuff. So these are just sort of like a high level overview and just a rough budget idea that makes up for the total amount that I've listed on this page. And I had to fix Stevens because I think I was short by like 150. So if we take 250 plus 200 plus 100 and 150 that would be 700 but um, obviously these are just very rough estimates I just wanted to have some sort of um, an idea all right I'm gonna use this header for this month over here um, for the other budget categories that I want to break down I'll start with the entertainment category which is essentially vacation And 
So this would be Florida vacation. And these are, again, some very rough estimates. I just sort of like threw some numbers in there just to get an idea. So we have gas. We've been watching a ton of like road trip videos and in terms of like how much um, things cost and things to take into consideration. We've driven to Florida twice already, but the last time we drove there, I think it was like in 2017. So it's been quite a while. So um, easy to forget. Um, and also get you into the mindset because driving to Florida from New Hampshire, it's no easy feat. It's about 24 hours. So it's, yeah, it's going to be a lot. And we only have really like 10 days total. So we really don't have much time for sightseeing or anything else. It's like we're going there, we're getting there. And I think this system um, feels a lot better. It's because I'm really going into the details, which is something that I hadn't done before. And that's definitely going to be a, um, a, um, a huge, a huge benefit. So, all right. So there's my, um, sheet sheet. All right. So for the entertainment category, we have 480. 1,000, 260, 260, 400. That's where the $2,400 comes from. Um, the next thing I'm setting up is uh, hair and nails. And one is my automated hair color. which is 31.50 a month. And then the other one is uh, my nails, manicure, pedi pedicure. I have been, I've been doing my own mani and pedi for a couple of years now, but I've sort of been taking a break from that and actually going to the salon. Um, I, I think there is room for everything as long as you budget for it in your budget. And if that's something that, brings me joy i'm not gonna neglect myself i i feel like i personally sacrifice in a lot of other areas so that might be like my one little treat um, a month so that's what we're working with and then the last thing i want to indicate here in terms of the breakdown will be copays so this month i only have one that i can think of yeah, it's, I only have one, so which would be my eye doctor. And I'm anticipating about $40 or so. I actually have no idea, but I don't think it would be more than that. All right, so um, these kits have a, a header over here or have all these different headers. But since it's already green, I'm actually not going to use them. But there is one for debt that I will use, but not for the debt section. I'm going to use it down here to cover the savings goal area because I don't really need that right now. And what I want to do is I want to break down the debt payments. So as I mentioned, I have been a little bit irresponsible when it comes to my budgeting, um, most of 2022. And I have accumulated a little bit of debt um, that I had paid off before, etc. So, and that's the other reason why I'm going back to the cash envelopes is because sure there's and there's all these different um, thought processes in with regards to how you can use your credit cards and maximize them, etc. But I just know me and I know that if I use my if I use credit cards versus my debit card, I will spend more unnecessarily. <laughs> so it's a matter of knowing yourself and then what 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 will work for you so i know that if i put myself a limit then that's definitely going to work out better for me than 
if I just use, you know, when I, when I use credits, like I, I don't give it an, another thought versus with cash, I feel like I definitely have to be a lot more intentional. And cash, when I say cash, it could be physical cash or it could be debit card, just money that's in your account right now available to be used. All right, so these numbers that I'm writing over here essentially are part of the this category, the debt category. So I have one credit card which has a balance of 214.26. The other ones have a higher balance and the minimum payment is like $25, but I'm, I'm going to be adding $100 to each of them. Uh, until I'm paying I pay this off and then next month I'll focus on the next one until all of those are paid off they don't have like a ton of balances I just don't I just feel like I, I was a little bit out of control um, so that's what we're working with in terms of debt for the fixed income amount that's easy math we have 6200 Right, so let's add up the figures for expenses. And cell phone, it's a little bit higher this month because I got a new phone recently. So the first bill is gonna have a few extra bills or extra fees. I should say 60 197 I'm not adding the entertainment category because that's vacation sinking fund and I have $80 for total miscellaneous so that brings us to six here's my pen <laughs> that brings us to 6200 and 71 cents. All right, so the amount is pretty close to zero. I'm not gonna uh, stress out over the 71 cents. I, I think it's fine. Um, the difference, I'm gonna call it zero. And for total savings, that's gonna be separate. That's part of like sinking funds and everything else that we'll just um, add later as we need to. But I feel this is, this definitely will work. All right, so now that this whole section is done, I'm moving on to the other pages. I am blocking some things here because even though some of the figures are listed on the other page, um, there are some that are very um, specific and which will go into the other categories that have not shared, etc. So that's what we're working with. But let me go ahead and first start with this page and then we'll talk about this one. So this first section I use for my sinking funds. So there is a sinking funds header included in the kit, which basically changes the header that comes with the planner. So it says date, sinking funds, amount, plus or minus, and then the balance. It The idea behind it is so that every time that I add money to the sinking fund or deduct deduct from the sinking fund, since I only have one bank account where I keep those, I know exactly how much is allocated for each. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two check, two check marks because I'm only gonna use one page. And the reason why I'm only using one page is because we'll talk about it with the other ones. Essentially, the way that I'm using the other pages limits how many pages I can use for sinking funds and I don't want to be stranded without having enough space. So that's why I've consolidated this um, page to house the sinking funds for what would be most of the times two pay periods a month. So the first sinking funds categories is going to be savings. Now savings is a sinking fund but also not but I do want to track it and it would be the first thing that I want to set money aside for, um, and I'm not gonna include the totals on here, but essentially that would be uh, the first one. Uh, the, the two check boxes represent the dates. So for example, the first check box will be on the second, and then the second one will be on the 16th, which will be the second pay period. There are three pay periods in the month of December, but I'm only gonna count two because that's mostly most of the months only have two pay periods. So I'm not going to split hairs. I, would, I just, I'm gonna keep it as consistent as possible. Now the rest of the sinking funds 
will be car insurance, taxes, homeowners or home insurance, um, prime, property taxes, Art list, uh, WordPress, and I have my car registration. Now, there's other sinking funds that I can add. Um, of course, I would want to have a sinking funds for like Go Wild, for instance, or I want to have a sinking funds for clothing holidays, vacation, all of that. I will get to that eventually. Right now, I feel like I just to I just need to like simplify and really get myself into a um, a good uh, space, sort of speak. So then I can add those things. But if I want to start as simple or restart as simple as possible. So for a car, we'd be looking at 30 and 30, so it's 60 each month. Taxes would be 210 each pay period, so a total of 420. Homeowners would be 40 per pay period. So basically what I've done is I have taken the total of the um, however much is due for the whole year and then I divide it by 12. There is a couple different ways that you can do that. You can definitely um, figure out how many months you have left. Uh, it's 180 on this one. And then divide it by how many months you have left. But of course that's obviously going to switch. So I wanted just to have a pretty fixed number and consistent across the board. The other thing that I'm doing here is that I also rounded up the numbers, rounded up or down. Oh, this one is not 20, it's 10. 20 total for the month. I rounded up or down so that I would pick denominations. Oh, see why I can't talk and write at the same time? I rounded up and down so that I would pick denominations that I could get from the ATM because I this is already complicated enough or not complex but definitely takes a little bit more effort than if you say you weren't doing this so if I have to rely on the bank being open to get the right change that I need or all of that I'm just not gonna stick with it so this is one of the changes that I think might work better so like for example this morning I went to get my cash envelopes and the bank was closed because I went right after the gym. So, but I, I was still able to get all of my cash that I needed for the next couple of weeks. So that brings us to 510 for one pay period and then 500 for the other one. And then this little checkbox will be once I add it to the sinking fund, I can check it off. Now, the other thing that's included now in the budget kit are these little thin strips Essentially, they're the same uh, length as the other ones, but I just wanted to use these as some sort of like a divider. So below this page, if I need to add or subtract from the sinking fund or below this section, I can just add it here and then carry it over to the next month, which is something that I've, I've always done. So <clears throat> for the totals, Right now, um, I'm not going to add it uh, because, mm, let me think this about this one. Yeah, I'm not going to add them. Uh, so once I do uh, on the 16th, again, when I get the second set of sinking funds, then I'll go ahead and add the totals so that I know exactly how much I have and then I'll carry those over. 
and I'll know because each of these will have a check mark, which we're gonna do in just a little bit. All right, and then before I move on from this page, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add, I should have write it out beforehand. I'm just gonna add the sinking fund, sinking fund header. And I'm not sure if I wanna put it in the middle or not. I'll just put it here and I'll just put a little piggy bank right there. Now moving on to the second page. Now this is where the biggest difference has been made for my budget that I have implemented that has worked out a lot better. So basically what I use this page for is sort of like a check register. So there are uh, new headers here that are titled date, expense description, amount plus or minus and then the balance. And essentially what I do is I carry um, the total that I have actually in my checking account. So what I actually have in the bank because it's one thing to budget what you're expecting to come in and then also to know that you have enough funds for the bills that are coming in. So those are kind of two separate things that you have to balance when you're working with your budget. So for example, so this would be the date of the transactions. I write up at the top, I write my starting balance, how much I have in my bank account. And then I start to list the actual amounts for these transactions as well. So I put in how much is um, each of these so for example my gym is 169 so I write 169 and then I deduct it from the total balance so I have like a running balance uh, from my bank account and I can also anticipate expenses that I know that are coming out so for example life insurance and cell phones do not come out until a few days from today but I want to know that I have the money in the bank accounted for that bill that gets automatically pulled out so I write it out here with the total and then deduct it and then um, once it comes out, I write the date that it came out and I also have like a little check mark next to the total that I can check it off once it has cleared my bank account. So that has been the biggest uh, game changer for me when it comes to budgeting because before I used to keep a check register, but having to log the same transaction twice was um, <laughs> bugging me. I try not to do that if I can avoid it. So that's uh, system has been working out so 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 well all right so ne the next pages are essentially the same thing so that's why I consolidated my sinking funds into one page as opposed to two if you had watched my budget videos before then you know that I would use one page per pay period to allocate my sinking funds but um, that's why I've made that change now and I think that's going to work out really well uh, and basically this one, you know what, let me white it out before I put in the, before I put in the, the header. I guess I could leave it as spending summary because essentially that is what it is. Okay. Oh, and then this is um, expense tracker. And I'll just use this little like credit card looking thing, but I know it's not a credit card, it's a debit card. <laughs> Last thing I'm going to do with these pages before I mo move on to filling my cash envelopes, etc., is to add just a little bit of decoration just for because of the month that we're in and just to pre it up. Although I don't have a ton of room for decorations this month, which is fine. Uh, just a couple of things to highlight it. Kind of keeping it in the spirit of of the season there we go so that's perfect for gifts some of this greenery up here be a little bit of 
few stars over here. There's a little one over there. Obviously, I have a lot going on here, so I shouldn't be adding all this. But they're so pretty, I can't help it. Um, I think I need... Maybe I'll go with... Maybe I'll go with uh, this green one over here. And then maybe another tiny little green one over here. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I might push my luck and add a tiny little tree on the other side. Oops. That wasn't a straight line. Ah. We'll put it up higher. Okay. I think that's good. I'm not going to fix it. Okay. Um, all right. So we're moving on to the cash portion uh, so that I can fill up my cash envelopes. So these cash envelopes I created and I have labeled them with my four main cash envelope categories. And as I mentioned, I'm keeping them as simple as possible. So those are my four categories. So hair, nail, hair and nails, groceries, dining out and miscellaneous. And I have sort of like my cash my cash breakdown so over here of how much each thing is going to be filled with each category so this is what i took to the bank um to the atm so that i could take out the cash so let's start with uh groceries um that's the first category so we have 180 20 40 60 81 20 40 60 80 so that is groceries so that one is done uh, then we're going to go to the dining out category so we have 60 20 40 60 20 40 60 hair and nails we have 120 20 40 60 81 20 20 40 60 81 20 and then we have miscellaneous we have 40, 20, 40. All right, so the other thing that I added to the cash envelopes in the back are these trackers. So these are uh, on my uh, removable, repositionable sticker sheet, and I just label them with each category, and basically I can just write down just to track how much I spent and then how much I have left if anything um, at the end and because they're repositionable they're easily come off and i can just put a new one in for each month as opposed to having like all these different loose uh, pages so let's go ahead and add these to my wallet and i do add uh, like a page lifter for my wallet just so that things lift pretty easily so there you have all of these and I love these because they don't really make up they don't take up a, a lot of bulk in the wallet so now we're moving on to filling my sinking funds cash envelopes so I'm using this uh, mini accordion file is from Erin Condren I created the label for it and I actually ordered another one I have one coming on the way especially at this time because they are on sale as of the time of this video and I think it was a great deal I think it was like only 625 or something like that uh, for the accordion file so I definitely could not pass that up and the reason why I grabbed another one is because these are like my bill sinking funds I want to create uh, another one once I'm ready to do so uh, for all those variable expenses sinking funds like vacation clothing all of that stuff right now I feel like I'm in a really good spot with like clothing or even makeup and all of that stuff so I am I'm not creating those categories for now even though I probably should because those are expenses that I'm going to have in the future but when it comes to financial priorities that's not one of them right now I can do with what I have so that's where uh, this comes in so I've does not come labeled so i created the labels for these so all of the labels that we see on these are basically the same uh, categories that i have listed here so that's what we're going to fill out next 
So we'll start first with uh, car insurance. So we determined that each pay period would be $30. So I'm just gonna grab a 20 and a 10. So it's $30 for car insurance. Then I have taxes is 210. I'm gonna use the 50s. One, two, 10, 15, 20, then I have um, home insurance, it's gonna be $40. I'm just gonna grab two 20s, 20, 40. I'm gonna go with Prime, $10, and that is not gonna get filled. Next pay period, property taxes will be 180. One hundred, one, two, three, four, one eighty. And then um, art list and WordPress will be ten dollars each. And that's gonna go under content. I kind of have those two grouped together. They're due around the same time too. And then the last one is car registration, which will be twenty dollars. Now, sure, I could add these to um, a bank account. Uh, but again, I'm simplifying bank accounts. And the other thing is why I like it is because I kind of like it out of my <laughs> bank accounts because then it's like specifically allocated. I feel like it's even more allocated here. It has a specific purpose. So, so that's what we're working with. Of course, I wouldn't keep like my, our general savings, etc., and our other financial stuff um, in the house, but I don't think this would be um, a, a huge deal guys so that brings me to the end of this budget setup I feel really really good with the system that I've put in place of course it because it is a new system it does take a while to get set up um, but once it's running it should be running like a well oil machine every single week and I cannot wait to share my updates with you guys and share uh, my progress and hopefully inspire you if this is something that you also want to take into consideration and start working on for the new year definitely i'm right there with you so thank you guys so much for joining me today for this very special budget overhaul video let me know if you have any comments or questions down below if you're new to my channel i would love for you to subscribe and if you like this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up thank you again for joining me today friends and as always i'll see you in the next video Bye bye